my name is Benji, and I come from Poland, and now I'm a student here at the University of Lodi. And as a story, I would like, what I would like to tell you about, um, I will start by going back uh, four years, three and a half, uh, when I was in high school, back in Poland, and I decided to, uh, well, I wanted to go to high school, to continue my high school education abroad. And uh, I found a school, I applied, I got in, and uh, this is how a very like tr very transformative experience of my life has started. Uh, I met people from all over the world. I had uh, um, I had roommates from three different countries. I I got to see things and learn things that I didn't learn before about things that my education in Poland didn't allow me to do. Uh, to a very broad range from humanities to social sciences, uh, and also to travel and really understand what is out there in the world, things that we usually don't talk about. And uh, as I was approaching uh, the end of my high school, when I was uh, in 12th grade, I obviously, like everyone was applying to university because applying, going to university seems like the most basic and thing to do, something that everyone does, and something that I never questioned because ever since I was a baby, it was drilled down my head that I was going to university. I mean, I didn't have. Uh, authoritarian parents or anything like that, but that's just the mindset that I grew up with. Um, so yeah, when I was in 12th grade, I applied to university. Uh, I, uh, one of those universities was NYUAD, and I came here for candidate weekend. Um, then a few weeks afterwards, I received my acceptance letter, and everything seemed great. I was pretty convinced that I want to start my university, my studies here. Um, and if everything went all right, I would have been in my second year by now, but I'm in the first. So what happened? Um, as I was getting, uh, as I was about to graduate and I was talking to my other high school friends about what are their plans, I started to hear more and more about gap years, about the idea that uh, you delay your university by a year, or in some cases by more, in order to do something in your life, to travel, to volunteer, to work. Um, of course, sometimes it's a uh, force, sometimes it's because uh, unfortunately may not uh, be financially uh, suited to pay for university. Sometimes it might be because uh, your grades are not good enough to get in. But still, there are many talented people who decided that they don't want to start university quite yet. Um, you know, when, when I started to read more about it, and uh, re uh, watch videos, talk to people, I understood that it is a really big problem. Uh, there's a lot of problems related to how our educational system is structured. And uh, one of the answers may be taking time to try to better understand yourself. Uh, so what I did, I decided to take a gap year myself. Uh, and the first time of my gap year, I uh, applied to a program in Boulder, Colorado in the US. Uh, which was a social entrepreneurship incubator, where I would learn how to have a better, how to carry out the initiative that I wanted to do, which was to promote gap years in Poland, where, where I come from. Uh, so I started a website, and uh, I basically, during my year, <coughs> during the second half of my gap year, I spent a lot of time going around Poland and telling people what are gap years, why they are worth taking, and I'll share some of that with you today. Um, so, yeah, as I was delving deeper into this topic and trying to understand what are the problems, um, because I was dealing mainly with high school students, I understand that most of you are in university or after university, right? Anyone from high school here? No? Just university? Okay. Uh, but I believe that many of those issues are transferable to uh, also universities. And although those are figures are specific for Poland, I do think that many of them uh, have relation to what's happening elsewhere. Uh, so, yeah, so this is one of the questions that I was asking people. What career would you like to pursue in the future? Uh, because clearly uh, it's important to know what you want to do in the future when you're in high school and you're choosing a university major, something that is going to influence your life for years to come. Uh, so any guesses? So these are the answers. This is the distribution of answers, right? But what are the actual labels? What do you think receive the most votes? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, finance. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. So, I actually think it's uh, something is wrong with this figure. It's flipped because the the long one should be other. But still, yeah, I don't know. Was by far the most co the most common single answer, uh, and that's an issue, right? Out of 121 people who answered the survey, tw over 20, which is something like um, 15, 20 percent, said that they don't know what they want to do in the future. Um, and that is further reflected in what happens in the job market. 41 percent of youth work in jobs that have little or no relation to their education. Uh, so people go to study, uh, finish their high school, university, and so on, and then go to the job market doing something completely different. Is it necessarily bad? Well, no, there, of course, you, you can do something for your major that you love and then start doing something else that you also love. But if we are honest with ourselves, probably a lot of those is because of mismatches, because of, of misunderstanding of what, are, how, what the labor market needs. Or uh, that's because people decide to start studying something, but they then stop because they do realize that they don't, they don't like it. And that sh reflects uh, lost time, lost resources, and uh, a lot of stress to people who really often have to navigate in an environment where there is little tolerance for young people switching their careers, especially from parents. Uh, so yeah, when, when I tell you the word phrase gap year or leave of absence or sabbatical, what kind of things come to your mind? Do you have any thoughts about it? Something you heard, you read? Backpacking across Europe. Right, back across Europe, yeah. Um, so I come from Pakistan, and the idea of gap years there is also very um, either unheard of, or anyone who's in a gap year is going to be somebody who was unsuccessful in their university applications. Um, so the idea of voluntary gap years is, again, not a thing. So if you hear the term gap year, then you're like, ah, they must not have gotten into a university. It's, it holds very negative connotations. Right, yeah. So is it during university time that people <coughs> take a year to work? Well, for military service, it really depends. But most um, people do it after, like, after you finish first year of college, and then they take um, like two gap years. Yeah. Any other thoughts? I feel like in South Africa, gap years are more popular. Like compared to all the countries I've lived in, I feel like people do have that mindset that it's it's okay take a break for a year, um, just get back to step one and figure out who you are and what you want to do, which mm -hmm. is great. Sorry, yeah. I haven't been here, so. It's okay. <laughs> My voice is yeah, so I, I think there's a widespread, you know, from countries like Poland and maybe Pakistan, where, where it's really seen as something bad to do to countries like Turkey and Denmark and uh, Norway, where over 50% of high school graduates decide to take a gap year. And then in the other dimension, you have um, you have places uh, like uh, like South Africa, where where it's seen as something for normal people to do, versus maybe Zimbabwe, where it's only uh, you know something meant for the privileged people. But there is a lot of statistics, and I will just show a few that reflect that their gap years are not that bad, and um, they happen, and they can really meaningfully contribute to people's careers. So I did this pre presentation of few dozen, like a lot of times in different conferences and high schools in Poland. And uh, something, when I, always when I ask people, what do you think, what do you hear, what have you heard about gap years, the most recurring answer is after, if you take a gap year, you won't come back to university. Um, and this is something that finds completely no uh, backing in facts. So 90% of people completing a gap year returns to university within a year, which is and, and it's not only a lot. When you, when you really think about the remaining 10%, it 
these are people who go out to the world to discover that there's something else than their university degree that they want to, to do, and they don't need the university anymore to do that. That's great. Uh, so that's something that it's really valuable to remember, <laughs> use against your whoever wants to deter you from taking a gap year. Uh, on the top of that, it turns so Robert Claggett was uh, director of admissions at Middlebury College, and he also worked at admissions at Harvard. And uh, he took uh, data of students who are about to who are entering the university, and he uh, took grades and in general. Uh, accomplishments of students and then to project, make projection as to how they were, so, were predicted to perform in university. And it turned out that students who took a gap year outperformed comparable students who, did, who didn't take it. Um, they had higher GPA over the course of four years of university. Uh, so that's a very interesting statistic and uh, we can have a discussion as to why it may be. Uh, I believe one of the reasons is, some of the reasons are maybe first, having greater motivation. Like once you're out in the world, you see things that you can do, you're really passionate about pursuing that goal, so you really put more efforts into getting to that place. Another reason may be, if, for the, if you go out to the world and become independent, suddenly college seems to be so much easier. Uh, because, you know, everything's organized for you and you just need to study something I uh, personally can relate to because after being for a year in the world uh, it doesn't call being out uh, being in a foreign country doesn't sound doesn't seem so scary anymore and uh, another uh, chunk of statistics that this report of gap year association from 2015 presents is the positive outcomes uh, that their gap years had on the people who took them and one of one of them, one of the big ones, is that 84% of those surveyed said that gap year contributed uh, to developing skills that were useful later in their career. Uh, so that's a lot of a lot of theory. But what can you actually do in a gap year? So we heard before about backpacking in Europe. So I I'll give you some some stories about people that I interviewed about their gap years at uh, different stages of their careers. Uh, so this is Dominik, uh, he's from Poland, and he, when he was in high school, uh, he thought he wanted to study engineering. Uh, but somehow, somewhere, he heard about the idea of taking a gap year. And since he's a very adventurous person, he thought that uh, going to, for, a year, for half a year in Australia would be a great idea. Initially, he wanted to volunteer, uh, but it turned out that volunteering, although it's supposed to be, you know, cheap and free and everything, can be quite pricey. Uh, so what he decided to do instead is to uh, travel by hitchhiking around the country. Uh, but he didn't have money. So we have this theme of money recurring, right? So what he decided to do, he decided to spend three months uh, following his graduation from high school, working two jobs, one weekend, one regular week. He also had a motorbike that he sold to have this experience. Uh, <coughs> And he bought uh, flight tickets to Australia, and New from, from Poland to Australia, from Australia to New Zealand, and then back to Poland uh, to go there and travel by hitchhiking. He hasn't hitchhiked much before, although before the travel itself, he did a few travels um, around Europe to get used to it and understand how it all works. And he spent three months uh, touring the country, discovering different uh, places that are off the beaten track, as you can see here and also having some volunteering experience because it turns out that there is, once you start digging, it, there's so much, so many resources available in the internet that help you connect to people, whether to find cheap accommodation or cheap travel, means of travel or uh, places to volunteer. So he did all kinds of volunteering so that he could get a place to sleep and food to eat, uh, including, uh, you know, he was, told me once he was, uh, on a quad, uh, taking care of the sheep on that 10,000 hectares uh, field with 10,000 sheep that, you know, he had to uh, push from one side to the other to make sure that they are eating good grass and everything. Uh, so that was quite an adventure for him. And through that, um, so for him, gap year wasn't an immediate uh, solution to his question about what he wants to do in the future. 
But one thing he, he said and many other people say is that through being out in the world without this constant pressure on what you need to achieve next, he had time to really look around and listen to the people that are there and try to uh, think what are the options. So he also met people from different walks of life and he decided that he's, he wants to study business, uh, specifically uh, finance and investing. And this is what he's doing now. He's uh, in the third year of university right now. He continues to travel, but he says that this was one of the more meaningful experiences uh, in his life. Next person uh, was Kasia. Uh, she's also from Poland, or we can call her Kate, okay? So uh, she, when she graduated from high school, she uh, was planning to go to university. And she was, coming, she was from a small town, so she didn't really feel empowered to do that, you know, to stand up against her parents' will and all the environmental factors around her. So she just started university, uh, even though she wasn't very convinced that that's the right thing for her. Uh, and only after spending three years in a big city, surrounded by perhaps more liberal uh, friends, she uh, got the courage to take a uh, leave of absence and uh, travel for and leave the country for one year. Uh, something that she decided to do is to go to Brazil with an organization called ISEC, uh, which is one of the oldest and biggest uh, international uh, youth organizations uh, that organizes volunteering and work opportunities for people in different countries. Uh, so before that, she did an Erasmus exchange uh, in Portugal. She spent one semester there, so she knew some Portuguese, so that's why she wanted to, uh, to go to Brazil. Apparently, getting to Brazil uh, with Isaac is quite difficult. There's a lot of people who want to go there, not so many opportunities. Uh, so she had a really hard time getting there. She spent actually three months searching for an opportunity. In the meantime, she had options to go to many other places, uh, but she was very determined to do what she wanted to do. Uh, and eventually, she got it. She spent uh, three months there interning with a marketing uh, company uh, that gave her clearly uh, good uh, work experience that was later useful. But also, again, it was a very liberating experience for her to be able to uh, listen to different people and just expose herself to something that she hasn't, she hasn't seen before. Uh, for her, it was actually experience that made her even more confused than she was before. So when she came back, she finished university and she took another gap year to went on to travel to Southeast Asia. Um, that actually didn't end well because she got really sick and then she had to travel back. But most of the time, the travels uh, end safely and well. And I mean, now she's safe and well back home. And uh, the last story I would like to share is uh, Zosha, who, when she was in high, she, she's always liked art. So something that she would do in her free time was to draw different patterns on clothes and bags and just you know being a bit more artsy and hipster than an average individual. Uh, and then some of her friends noticed, well, like you're doing really cool things. Like, how about you make business out of it? Uh, and she thought, that's actually not a bad idea. So she started to, when she was in the last year of high school, she started to draw uh, and, and do some embroidery on clothes and selling those artisan products uh, in Warsaw because this is where she lives. And then when she was about to finish high school and go to university, she realized, okay, maybe that's actually a feasible idea for a business. And uh, she decided she was lucky to have uh, parents who are entrepreneurs. Uh, so they were fine with that and they were able to provide uh, some uh, mental support, mentoring for her. And so she decided to take a, uh, take a gap year, not go to university. And she, she's been working uh, during her gap year on that, on that business. That in the meantime, obviously, to make money, she, she's been doing different things. So she's a photographer, she's a part-time model, uh, and also she used this time for other things, like travel. Here you see her picture of her uh, hitchhiking in, in Iceland. Uh, so right now she's studying, uh, right now she's studying art uh, in Poland, but the business is something that she continues to do. And, there are many stories of people who went on in their gap year because really having been in a gap year and working on my own project and now entering university, I realized how much 
more constrained I am in terms of time. So I completely understand uh, people who decide to take a gap year to pursue opening up their own business uh, because it's really difficult to give adequate effort if we don't do that. And I think uh, Joshe is a great example of a successful story for that. And these are examples of fairly young people. But then when we look at it, when we just Google uh, gap year, you know, what, what you can do in a gap year, uh, or who, who's done a gap year, we, we discovered there are a lot of famous people, uh, or well-known people who took a gap year and for whom it was an important step in their career. For example, once I had the opportunity to speak to Henry DeCio, who's the who was the CEO, the Chief Operating Officer of Obama's 2008 presidential campaign. Uh, and for him, for example, taking a sabbatical is a habit. He takes it, uh, he, it happens that he takes it uh, every seven years, and he uses this time as an opportunity to take a step back from uh, his career, to reflect on what he's done in the previous year, what he wants to do next, what are the things in the world he cares about and how he can get best involved. What are the new things he wants to do? For example, in his first sabbatical, he spent, uh, he spent this year um, uh, working with, so he's from the US, and he spent this year working with labor unions in the UK. In his second sabbatical, he wrote a, a, in 2009 after the presidential campaign, he spent this year being an author and lecturer. Uh, so he wrote a book about the 2008 campaign. Then in his last sabbatical last year, he decided to spend some more time with his family and try to uh, become an educator and design a uh, curriculum for Ashoka, which is one of the biggest uh, change maker organizations in the world. Uh, so these are, of course, an, an interesting thing. I asked him about money. You know, you, I was thinking, you know, if you're a CEO of Obama campaign, you, you don't have to worry about money, right? So it's easy for you to take sabbatical because there are people who, you know, have to make the ends meet somehow. And suddenly pulling one, one uh, if you're a family of two people and you have two children, suddenly cutting 50% of your income is not viable. And what he said is actually not true, that their income for um, administrative work is not that great and they've been always, uh, they, they haven't had problems, but it's not like they, had, they were rich. Um, so even though he was in his gap year, he had to uh, tinker around and try to find uh, uh, different gigs to, to get money on the go. Um, and it's possible, and it also made him more, forced him to be more creative about the, make, the ways he makes money. Uh, so these are only some of the things that you could do in your gap year, the ones that I said before, the ones that are here. And uh, I'm happy to talk more. Uh, if you are interested, if you have any questions, uh, we can talk about it now. Yeah? Uh, um, could, you, could you give us some more insight about like uh, high school students that are graduating that want to do like, a trade, like an uh, electrician or, or plumbing or something like that? Like, um, what, what's the format like in Poland? Like, if you go to schools, and would you recommend them to take a gap year before they pursue like, a trade? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how it works in Poland, we have three different high school options. There is high school that prepares you for university, there is high school that prepares you for a job, like the ones you mentioned, and then there is a mixed one. Um, and I do see, uh, I understand how it's more difficult for them, because once they are in the professional, the vocational school, uh, they are already working for a company, and once they finish high school, they are expected to continue working in this company or in another company. Um, so I think it's less common for them to take gap years, um, also because very often the socioeconomic background of families of students who go there is different, and it's even more difficult for them to convince their parents. Uh, unfortunately, also, the education, the things that I'm saying are the things I'm saying. But 95% of teachers uh, don't want to listen to me. And they don't want me to speak to their students. Uh, so I had a lot of struggles actually finding the right teachers in the right schools that will allow me to speak. Um, so there isn't, those people will not find any type of institutional support to you know, go out to the world. And as to a question if they should do it, uh, I don't know. I think it's everyone's personal, personal case. Uh, but I think there is definitely a value. I think in particular for those people who 
decide to pursue a career in the place where they live to spend some time and uh, discover things beyond just what's in their city. Mm, yeah, I have a small question. Yeah. I'll, I'll pass it back to you. Uh, so, uh, as you mentioned, uh, I you said like you were fighting for the right teachers at the right school, right? Mm. So, so you're saying that teachers differ, like some are pretty, pretty flexible with these ideas and some are very not flexible. So, when you say the right teachers, so do you mean the teachers who are not right? Are they doing like a, maybe, let's say, a pretty bad job in their career or, or are they providing like a bad, let's say, like a message to the students? Mm -hmm. How do you take this? I mean, I mean, when I said right, I didn't mean they are right or wrong. I mean, they are right for, for me to talk to. Um, I think that it's important for teachers to just give students wealth of opportunities to choose from and, uh, yeah, and choose from, you know. I, I don't think teachers should play such a, try to limit so much the choice of the students uh, because, after all, people in high school are already adults and they have capability to choose by themselves. Uh, so I think teachers should encourage students to read more about it and have access to this information. <coughs> what has been the most valuable thing you learned in your gap year? And what, if there is anything you would have done differently that would have made your experience better? Mm. So I'll answer the first question. First, so I came back to Poland after uh, two and a half years of living abroad, and I was very, um, I was very committed to doing what I wanted to do, and I was kind of, um, I didn't care, I, I, like I didn't pay attention to the opportunities that are around me, and I think, okay, so make, to make it more straightforward, so basically I, uh, when I came back, I applied for a few jobs. And I got an opportunity for a really nice job uh, that would allow me for uh, a lot of get a lot of work ex great work experience, meet new people, travel, get good money, and so on. But I was very um, very committed to the project that I wanted to undertake to, to promote the gap years. And I turned down this offer. And uh, in the end, my project wasn't as successful as I wanted it to be. So I. I wish I took up that offer, but I know it doesn't make sense to think that because I didn't, like I would have taken this job if I knew I'm going to fail, right? But I didn't know that I'm going to fail, so. Uh, you know now. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, but what the other thing that I learned, uh, probably just when I was, like I like to say, like out there in the world, I realized how close how many opportunities are very close by, and I didn't realize it until I actually started university, because suddenly when I entered university, I'm put on this, you know, uh, path where, okay, you need to do first year of university, second, third, fourth, like, stuck for four years in university, where like, you know, okay, so you need to study in the semester, do internships in the summer, then again study and internships, and then get to work, and then finish, and then get get, get a job, and then ha climb up the corporate ladder, and you know, you're in a, like, an assistant position, no one's gonna care about what you think. And it's just ridiculous, you know? Because like I met so many people who are like 18, 19, 20, 22, and like they're starting their businesses. Like people at the age of 25 are millionaires and even billionaires, okay? So just this whole concept of how structured world adults want to make for us is super annoying. And I think that uh, I learned in my gap year that it doesn't have to be this way. Hi, um, great presentation, kind of an eye opener. But uh, is it also possible to, like, because we're well, coming from traditional backgrounds, like she said, it's hard for actually taking a gap year. But for me, uh, is it, I'm sorry, is it possible that you can actually understand more by getting an experience through a good internship or something? Or do you, or is it, do you have to take like a gap year to understand where you belong and what you want to do? Because experience sort of, puts light on what you're, asp what you're good at. So because of that, you can actually do the same thing, I'd say, but yeah. So if I understand correctly, you're saying, can, I, can you know what you want to do without taking a gap year? Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, I think so. So I, I got this question once, I was doing a presentation and there was this uh, very talented guy who wanted to pursue a career in uh, aerospace engineering, you know, <coughs> who wanted to work for the European Sp Space Agency. And yeah, I mean, for him, honestly, there isn't, it's not like he will take a gap year and ESA will hire you as in like research position, you know. So I think it, it's, it is career dependent if you really know what you want to do and in a very specific, like in some, there are fields where it's easier to try, like in journalism, marketing, um, you know, in those areas, business, in those areas, it's easier to try yourself in a gap year. While there are other fields where you do actually need to go to university. Uh, so I think it's very field specific. And second, of course, I think it's important to treat gap year as a way to find your, you know, calling. But then there's also so much more that you can get from that time. And actually, perhaps, if the sole question you have in your head is, how do I find the right career for me? How do I get on the right track with my work? Maybe what, should, what you should do is the exact opposite. Maybe you should go for a... Uh, two months retreat in a Buddhist monastery and cut off yourself from the work and spend this time meditating and that will help you more. Uh, so I would, I, I also don't think it's a great, I don't think it's a good idea to spend your entire gap year just working or interning. Yeah. Um, and sorry, just to add to that as well, um, there's definitely a factor of, you know, collecting experience in your gap year, but from my experience and uh, from the way some of my friends have taken <coughs> gap semesters, it's also to kind of take a break, step back, work on your mental health and rejuvenate yourself before coming back to your work. Um, and that I think um, just kind of adds to the value of having a gap year. Um, but perhaps traditionally that's not what gap years are kind of, you know, sought to be. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to point that element as well. Yeah, thank you. You said something about the GPAs as well for um, um, people who took gap years compared to the people who didn't take gap years, right? Mm -hmm. And then I, I really like the fact that you said um, there was a point that going to the rejuvenation sort of things. So after school, it's like a year you just sit back and refresh yourself and then go back into it. That's why you're looking forward to university. Uh, sometimes maybe after school you're like, man, I'm done with studying. I, and then you just go into uni and then you're not motivated. So you're just going through the motion. Like as a, uh, just, I just want to get it done with rather than after you've done all your stuff that you wanted to do, you've got it all out of the system, all the things you needed to do, and now you're getting into uni. So I feel that rejuvenation is yeah. quite, a, quite a big point for taking the gap here. Yeah, it's yeah. quite, quite popular. Totally, totally. Yeah, also, I, so I have this robust website about gap years in Polish with a lot of articles, but as I believe most of you don't speak <coughs> Polish. Uh, so I also decided to start something in English. So I have a website. It's called Plan My Gap. You can find it at planmygap.com. Uh, there's not a lot of materials yet, but if you know at some point you think you want to take a gap year or you want to find me, uh, you can just go there and look it up. Uh, I I'm, so I after starting this website, I discovered there's a company called planmygapyear.com. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm a bit worried to promote myself too much because they'll sue me and I'm thinking how to figure, sort it out. But, okay, that's it, thank you.